Lesson 1.1, slopes, equations of lines, and linear functions. And you see I have this wonderful line graphed right here. This line contains the point minus one minus one and two comma one. But my first question is what is the slope of a line? And I, I'm gonna give more than one answer. My first answer, well, it's a steepness. And really, slope is a rate of change, and that's quite important to think about in this very first lesson, the rate of change. Um, and my second answer is how you calculate or more information. So for example, if we have, say, x1, y1, and if we have x2, y2 on the line, then we can calculate the slope from these two points, the slope is, well, you might have seen M for slope. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start using some calculus type notation, which is change in Y, this delta Y over delta X. And this is read change in Y over change in X like this. Well, this would just be Y2 minus Y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I will just add over here in pink exactly what I just said, which this is notation. This is notation. And you will see this type of notation a lot in calculus. And it reads change in y over change in x. So um, let's go back to this example. I will calculate the slope on the next page, but for the moment, let me just highlight change in Y. It would be here. This is change in Y. And then this here gives us the change in X. Well, if I label these points, say, x1, y1, and x2, y2, then my slope is um, y2 minus y1. This is the change in y, and then divided by change in x, which we can calculate here. This is 1 minus minus 1 divided by 2 minus minus one. You note that this is two over three. So my line has slope two over three. Now I wanna talk about this interpretation, um, which in fact, before I even write it down, we can see. So what do we do? If you move delta X and we just calculated, this is three units, okay? Along the X direction and also move delta Y, which is two, units along the y direction, you return to the line, and that is a beautiful interpretation about slope. So we move over by three and up by two, and we are back on the line. So let's write this. Just as I said, if you start at any point on the line, and then, well, we do two things. We move delta x units, along the x direction. And it's positive here, positive x direction is this way. And at, then you move delta y units along the y direction. What will happen is you return to the line. And um, this is just part of this line, but you note that you don't have to just start at one of the two points you're given. You can take any point on the line and we move, in this case, three units in the X direction, and then we move two units in the Y direction and we return to the line. And this is kind of a important uh, thing about slope. 
Okay, now we have two special kind of lines I want to talk about before I move forward, and that is vertical lines and horizontal lines. So let's just graph um, this vertical line. So x equals seven would be, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's not going to be perfect, but we get an idea. This is the line x equals seven. Well, what do we know about slope of a vertical line? If you took two points, um, note that the change in x is zero. Maybe I will say that because change in x equals zero. And this is true for any vertical lines. If we think about slope, change in y divided by change in x, well, we can't divide by zero in mathematics. And so here, vertical lines have undefined slope. Now, the other example that I wanna talk about is a horizontal line. And so let's graph a horizontal line, y equals two. Say this is one, two. Then we have a horizontal line, y equals two. Well, you notice in this case, the change in y is zero, change in y is zero. And so we have change in y over change in x. Um, the slope here is zero, so the slope is zero for every horizontal line. And those are two special examples of lines, vertical and horizontal lines. Now, next, I wanna look at these two graphs where we have many lines graphed together. The first on the left, we see several lines with positive slope, several lines with negative slope. Um, now, I mentioned that slope is rate of change, and that's really a fundamental concept in calculus. In fact, you could say, and many do, that calculus is the study of rates of change and slope uh, lines, and their slope is really the first example of thinking about this. So you see when you have positive slope, well, um, as you move left to right, and this is how we read a graph, you notice that the y values of these lines with positive slope are getting higher. So this is increasing. These are increasing functions. And similarly, whenever you have a negative slope, well, the y values, as you read from left to right, are uh, getting smaller. These are decreasing functions. And it's good to think about these notions right now when we're first talking about lines. So what I want to move into is the equations of lines. We really have two forms that come up. The first one is slope intercept, and we also talk about point slope. So what do you need for each equation of a line? For slope intercept, you need a slope, m, and then you need an intercept, which is b. Now, typically, we call it b. Now, what does this mean? This means that, so in other words, um, 0 comma b is on the graph. That is what it means to have intercept b. And then the equation in slope intercept form is just y equals mx plus b. This you should without a doubt know. In fact, both of these you should be comfortable with point slope and slope intercept. So this is the slope intercept form of a line. Now, um, point slope, we still need the slope. Maybe I'll just copy and paste this. We still need the slope. but Quite often, this is easier because, for instance, maybe you don't know the intercept. So you need a slope, and then you need a point, say x1, y1. This can be any point on the line. It doesn't have to be the intercept, but you know some point on the line. And then the equation is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. These are both very important, and we will practice both of these. Okay, well, the first example we will do is 
fairly standard when you are dealing with equations of lines, we are given two points and we want to find an equation of the line that contains them. So the first thing we will do, and this goes back sort of to the first example, is we'll calculate the slope, m. This is the change in y divided by the change in x. And um, if you want, you can label them. Maybe I will. Say I call this one x1, y1, and I call this one x2, y2, although you could really call either point, um, either one. So my change in y, I take y2 minus y1 and divided by x2 minus x1. Note that this is negative one over three. So this line is going to be, well, it's decreasing. We have a negative slope, but um, I have a slope and then you can pick either point. Um, I'll just use this one. Here is a point that's on my line, but you could also use the other one. Then we have y minus y1 is m x minus x1. If you wanted to, you could also write this in slope intercept, but this is perfectly fine. In fact, looking at this equation, I can read off the slope and I can also see a point that's on the line. Now, here is another example. Um, this is not point slope and this is not slope intercept. This is, in fact, the a more general way of writing a line. Um, but the question is, find the slope of this line um, and then graph it. And so I think the easiest thing to do is to solve for y. We want to write this in the form y equals mx plus b. Then we can read off the slope and we can also graph the line. OK, so maybe I will just copy it and then start working. We have minus 3y equals minus 6x plus 12. And now we can just divide by negative 3. Y is, um, maybe I'll do this in two steps because it's our very first example. We divide by negative 3. Now we can divide each term by negative 3. We get 2x minus 4. And so, well, the first part of the question, find the slope of the line. The slope is two because you see, I have that in slope intercept form, but then moreover, I can graph just looking at that form. So you see my intercept is negative four, which is right here. And then we can use what we discussed at the beginning. We go um, over one up two. Right, because if change in y divided by change in x is two, we could write that as two over one. So move over one up two. That would say that this point's on the line, this point's on the line, this point's on the line, for example, and then I can just connect these with a straight line. Okay. This is my line and I will put little arrows. Here's one more example. We want two different lines here. In fact, I have many things graphed. We wanna find um, both lines should go through the point two minus one. One of them will be parallel to the line y equals five X plus two, one of them will be perpendicular to the line Y equals five X plus two. And then we have these instructions that we want to write the equation in slope intercept form. Okay, that's important. We should always read directions. Now, this in fact is the line Y equals five X plus two, this one. And you can see I've graphed the other two. We just need to figure out their equations. Um, you can see by looking at it, first of all, these two lines are parallel. And what you notice is definitely they have the same rate of change. They have the same slope. And this is what it means for lines to be parallel. So in A, we do want M to be five because that is the slope of this line. 
And then we know the point on our graph is two minus one. But I will start off in point slope. So y minus y1 is m x minus x1. And now I can just solve for y. We have y is 5x minus 10 minus 1, or y equals 5x minus 11. This is the answer to letter A. Now we move on to letter B. This one we have to think about perpendicular. There's a few ways to say it. If you have two perpendicular lines, the product of their slopes is um, negative one. That's one way to say it. Another way to say it is that the slope will be negative reciprocal. So here we would have negative one over five. This is true provided your perpendicular lines are not a vertical line and a horizontal line because one has zero slope, one has undefined slope. But um, as long as your lines aren't vertical or horizontal, two lines are perpendicular provided the product of their slopes is negative one or you can solve like this, okay? So this line, which is here, the slope is negative one fifth. That is the perpendicular aspect. Now we still have this point, two comma negative one. And so we will begin very similar to the last example where we write it in um, point slope. And so we have y plus one is m, x minus two, and now I need to convert this to slope intercept. We have y equals negative one fifth x. Well, I have negative a fifth times negative two. This is plus two fifths. And then I have minus one. Okay, one more step. Y equals negative one fifth x. And then here, Two fifths minus one is negative three fifths. So this is the answer um, in letter B. That was a great example. Now, the linear functions part, I'm only gonna briefly talk about because the next lesson, we will talk further about functions. So I'm really just gonna talk about the notation. So a linear function, is of this form. Um, you notice all I have changed is instead of writing y is mx plus b, which is the slope intercept form of a line, I'm just using function notation of f of x is mx plus b. And this is really um, the only difference at the moment. Okay, so let's just write them in the above example, we have two different linear functions. It just means the graph of the function is a line as we see. Uh, well, we have f of x is 5x minus 11. That's one of them. This is part A. And then the other function we had, maybe I'll call that one g, was g of x is minus one fifth x minus three fifths. This was part B. Now, um, I wanna talk more about functions and then we can uh, further think about this linear functions aspect, but that's the next lesson. And so at this point you can work some exercises with lines and equations of lines for lesson 1.1. .1. Thank you.